What's up guys, it's Mangatai once again, and I'm here today to bring you my review of Bleach 586, the Headless Star 5. I wonder how many of these Headless Stars they're going to be. Joking aside, I think this is probably the last one actually, because I kind of think these are leading up from Ichigo's arrival to Uryu's departure, which is what we get today. Um, but, the chapter doesn't start with that. It kind of starts with what I kind of have to admit is probably my f the bit I'm more interested in, which is the big fight between the Shinigami and the Sturmator. Although, actually, there are some bits at the end of the Uru bit that's very interesting. But, you know, we'll go through the chapters we always do. Sorry the review's so late, I've just got back from work, so... Anyway, the chapter starts off with a really fantastic page, and that's one thing I have to say. The art this week is top. It's top-notch. Um, we get this awesome row, Rukio, Renji, Hisagi, Byakia, Yumichika, Ikaku, and it's cool to see that Rukio and Renji aren't necessarily, like, really, really prevalent. Like, they're getting just as much, uh, like, Hisagi, Ikaku, and Yumichika are getting just as much notice as the others. So the first story we see is Bansby, and he, uh, he, he's counting up to five, and I was like, holy, I'm, I was like, he's just gonna go straight out with Burner Finger 5, what? But no, apparently he's just, he's just, uh, he's just counting them. Nice little manga stream slip up. He says, "There's too many of you to go one on one." But there's actually more stermites, so that doesn't make any sense. And then he then he asks Colonel Sanders, who still has no name, if any of them are part of the special war potentials. To which Colonel Sanders says, "None of them are," which is interesting because I know a couple of people thought maybe Biaki would be, but no, he's not. Um, remember though, that special war potential is not necessarily indicative of power. It, it, we we still don't really know the criteria, but people have kind of guessed. Uh, my guess being that it's just to do with overall potential, unpredictability, and kind of like how they can be used in the war. Um, one point I want to make out quickly, though, is that Kubo is giving Basby an awful, awful lot of screen time. Um, and I kind of wish that he would tone it down a bit and spread it out, spread the love. You know, give some to Colonel Sanders, give some to Pepe. Pepe has appeared in one panel for the last two chapters. Um... I mean, generally, that kind of means that he's going to be important and that something major is going to happen with him later, but at the same time, I'd like to see him a bit more. And Colonel Sanders is starting to concern me a little bit because I'm almost a bit worried that maybe he's n he's not going to be as powerful as we've all hyped him up to be. Um, but, you know, at the same time, maybe he will be. Anyway, Basby's like, you know, how can there be none of them? You know, I haven't got time for this. And he whips out. At first, I thought it was a gun. Uh, not entirely sure where he gets it from. Because he seems to like hoik his sleeve up, but there's no way this this would fit in there. I mean, you'd think it would come off his Quincy cross, but you don't actually see that happen. But anyway, it's actually a crossbow, which is awesome. Again, very cool to see the Quincy using bows and arrows. Kubo seems to be pushing that on us a bit more, which is great. But suddenly he gets attacked from by a Kaku, who jumps out of nowhere, smashes down with Hozaki Maru. Basically, kind of goes flying, which is really, which is kind of funny. I think maybe he backflips. But anyway, he tries to shoot Ikaku with his bow and arrow. It's a really cool little nice piece of action. But he gets frozen. And immediately I was like, oh Christ, Toshiro's back. But actually, no, it's Ruki. I completely forgot Ruki was even there. Um, and Ruki has still got the whole attitude thing going on, which really annoys me. She's like, you know, what are you, what are you like, hard of hearing? It's like, oh, shut up, Ruki. You're probably going to get your ass kicked, to be fair. Anyway, then Ikaku says something. And it's, you know, Ikaku and Yumichika have barely been in this arc, when you think about it. Um... So, you know, it's nice to see them again. Hopefully they actually get to do something cool. Basby breaks out of the ice, and Lil Toto shows up. Now, Lil Toto... I've always liked Lil Toto, actually. I like her and Giselle out of the, out of the film writers. I've always liked those two. Um, and I've never liked the other two. And Lil Toto has been kind of promoted as, like, the um, the intelligent one. She's the she's the calm and collected one of the four, which is really cool. Um, and she basically says, let's not waste time, because Kurosaki's getting away. Let's all go Volston dig. Which I thought was interesting. Basby then goes Volstendig. Basby's Volstendig looks awful, by the way. Um, I can't believe that's actually his Volstendig. It's literally just two, two bars. Um, and then we see a bunch of wings appear. And it's interesting that the Volstendig is really not that big a deal anymore. Um, but this is an interesting little panel because we see little Toto's in the centre. Colonel Sanders is on the right. Menonas's hearts are on the left. But then there's another Volstendig which appears to be a set of connected rings. Now, judging on the positions of the characters on the panel next, that's presumably Nanana's Volstendig, which is weird as hell, because I, n I never actually said this, but I completely envisioned Nanana's Volstendig to be a set of rings. I haven't... They're so weird. If, it, if his halo is like what I was expecting, that's even weirder, which is a, a ring and then smaller rings inside, but I don't think it's going to be. I think it's probably going to be a star. But yeah, um... 
I can't say I called that because I never actually said it, but that I I was just thinking like now there's Volson Diggs gonna be a set of rings. Anyway, so we get to see um all the different Volson Diggs. Um Colonel Sanders, he's got the whole kind of digital thing going on still, although it looks a bit different now. Um Lil Toto's is very, very basic. I mean, it's kind of just like a couple of triangles. Obviously like teeth, if you put them together it looks a bit like teeth, but uh, Menonas is a bunch of hearts. I thought it would be clouds for Menonas because it's all like fluffy and everything. Interesting something that Giselle's not here. Presumably she hers will be like little bones maybe or something. Um, and what's possibly even more interesting to note is that Pepe is at the very back of this panel and he hasn't gone Volsendig, which is weird. Um, but Basby and Nanana are leading the charge and then down below we've got Rukio, Renji, all of them basically. Don't know why Renji is activating his Shikai when it was activated in the last couple of panels, but you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> amazing panel. I actually love this page. My my voice is going, this is bad. Um, no, this is a really great panel. Um, it's very dynamic, and it features an awful lot of characters, which is something Kubo doesn't do too often. Um, and it makes me really excited for this fight. I'm really excited. I hope we get a decent fight. I hope we get to see a lot. Something else that I kind of picked up on that might happen, might not, is that we could potentially pick out some matchups from this picture. It's possible that Kubo's done it, like, rows. So we could have Rukia versus Colonel. She's going to get her ass handed to her if that's the case. Renji and Basby. A lot of people have already predicted that. Biakia and Pepe, because they're both kind of at the back of their respective groups. Small note again is that Biakia is using Bankai already. Um, now that's interesting to me. Because that's twice we've seen him use it with his hand. His Bankai, not a big deal has been made out of it. Now I kind of see why. is because, you know, what can Kubo do other than Petals? We get it. Be Biakia's Bankai now has a shit ton of petals as opposed to his shikai now being the amount of petals as his bankai's um but if if kubo is not putting that much relevance on it then i don't necessarily feel that biakia has to win his next fight even though he probably will in which case i hope he doesn't go against pepe but that's another bag of worms uh, another can of worms but anyway yeah so you know you've got like Lil toto candice and meninas against hisagi um and yumichika maybe Although a lot of people want Hisagi versus Candice, which I can kind of see. Hisagi's bound to bank in this fight. Maybe even Yumichika might pull one out. And then Nanana could be against Ikaku, something like that. But I, I, I wholeheartedly expect more people to show up on the good guy's side. Um, yeah, that's that really. Uh, that's an awesome panel. That's probably my panel of the week. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And I just love how many characters are shown there. It's definitely interesting that Giselle is not shown there. And another point I want to bring up is just how basic these Volsendig are. As not, Master Masculine had really inventive looking Volsendigs. Like they were actual transformations. And then Kubo just seems to have dialed it down. And I don't really see any kind of criteria. There's no pattern. Like I don't really understand why those two have really good Volsendigs. And these ones are all very basic. So that's kind of weird. But then we skip over to Ichigo. We don't see any more of that fight. And he flies towards the, the tower with the beam of lights coming off it. And he basically shouts for you, Harbog. Uh, Hashwolf then steps in to face off with him, but he's intercepted by Uryu, who fires down an enormous arrow, which Ichigo blasts out of the way. There's a lot of big panels here for, you know, huge dramatic effect. Ichigo looking up at the top of the tower to see Uryu staring down at him. Awesome panel, very reminiscent of Biakia looking down at Renji just before they fought. These two don't actually really have a fight, though. They do a little bit of talking out, but it's very predictable dialogue. Um, you know, it, you know, basically, Uryu's just like, go home, you can't win, go home, don't throw your life away, this kind of thing. This kind of thing that's almost meant to look like come off as, I, it's it's difficult. I'm not sure whether Uryu's supposed to come off here as a proper bad guy, because um, obviously we, the reader, have a fairly good idea that he hasn't actually betrayed his friends, but obviously Ichigo doesn't know that. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard, it's, it's kind of hard. I imagine Uryu is genuinely concerned for Ichigo's well-being if he tries to fight your Harvark, so maybe it's supposed to look compassionate as well. But anyway, Ichigo's like, you know, crazy, obviously, as you would expect. A lot of people are unhappy with this because Ichigo is supposed to be mature and everything now, and he is. I'm actually, I have no problem with this because Ichigo acting any, any other way would be out of character. There's no reason for Ichigo not to go crazy. I mean, Uryu has now, as far as Ichigo's aware, his, one of his best friends has just completely betrayed them um, for an enemy that threatens to destroy the world. So, I have no issue with Ichigo going crazy. Um, Ichigo is mature, and he is composed against the other villains. Like, he didn't flip out once against the other Sturmitter. So, frankly, 
this is fine. Uri then pulls out a bow, very interesting, he has a different bow, it's kind of back to his basic bow actually, which is the huge one, which I like, that's very cool. Uh, I much rather he has the massive one than the tiny little one. And he finds Lictor Regen, which is kind of his signature move. It's light rain in German, so it's an awful lot of arrows, basically. And they come flying off the tower. Really great artwork. Um, Ichigo tries to defend it, but then an enormous thing kind of blocks it. At first, I thought it was Ichigo, because he's holding his sword up. And I thought, whoa, has he got another ability? It's like a shield. But no, it's actually Orihime. She and Chad appear out of, our gar out of a garganta, frankly, very randomly. Um... And possibly, this is possibly one of the best examples of in the nick of time I've ever seen. Um, because she couldn't have possibly known that was about to happen. But, um, yeah, they come out, so they've obviously finished their training. They're in different clothes, very weird looking clothes, if I may add. Of what the hell is Chad wearing? I mean, his coat is kind of cool, I guess, but he's not got like... Yeah, they look weird. They kind of do look a bit arankery, though, which I suppose makes sense. Um... Orihime's hairpins are also huge, so I don't know if that means that she's completed her powers or what. Uh, her defensive abilities seem to be pretty amazing now. But um, obviously no sign of Gin uh, Grim Joe, no sign of the Aranka at all. Basically, Uryu then just leaves, and we get a very interesting page where Yuharwaki's is like, have you said your goodbyes? Uh, and he's like, you know, and Uryu says yes, and, and Yuharwaki's like, this is the last chance you'll ever have. And then they disappear. They, they, they randomly start floating very reminiscent of Aizen, and then Ichigo's like, Ishida! And then Ishida just disappears, along with the others. The whole beam of light just disappears. I really like that ending. Um, admittedly, I kind of imagine Ichigo going, Sasuke! But, you know. Um, so, that ending. That ending we kind of need to talk about. <clears throat> uh, obviously, people are theorising Uri's going to die, because Yohavak's rather cryptic. This is the last chance you'll ever have. Um, now, I want to say number one, I thought it was interesting that Yuharvok actually gave a shit about whether Uryu had said goodbye or not. That's, you know, that's quite a fatherly thing to do, and like, you know, given Yuharvok's track record, he's not the most caring bloke in the world. Um, and he, obviously, he wasn't going out of his way to kill Chad or Ahime or Ichigo, so he was just like, you know, have you said goodbye to your friends, because we're out of it, basically. Um, and, yeah... But I don't think Uri's going to die. What I think is going to happen is Yuharvak wants him to stay in the Royal Realm forever. Um, now, this is kind of when we get into a lot of speculation. Because the end of the chapter is basically just Ichigo screaming for Ishida. And then it, they all disappear. The, the three bad guys, bad guys escape to the Royal Realm. That's the end of the chapter. And, in my opinion, probably the end of the next section of the arc. I think this chapter, for me... This is speculation time now. This chapter, for me, has really put home that we have a lot of time left in this in this arc. Because um, now I think it's going to be a huge section to do with the Royal Realm. Uh, I really want Kubo to go the whole way with this story and have Yuharvak dethrone the Soul King, take over the palace, reside there for a little while. That'd be amazing. And then this gorilla group of Shinigami try and take it back. No doubt we'll see the guard fight pretty soon. I imagine at least one of them will die. Um, but yeah, actually it was a really good chapter. I'm going to give it a 9. Um, I wish it had been a little bit longer, um, and a couple of the Volson digs were a bit dis disappointing. Um, now, the, another question I kind of, well, actually I've got bloody loads of questions to be fair, but one of them is, where is this battle with the Sturmator going? Now that the bad guys are actually, they've already got away, um, which is something Aizen can even do. He didn't even manage to get to the Royal Realm. And we can only presume that Yahavar, Kashworth and Uryu are now there. Where's this battle going to go? I'm kind of hoping these stone to retreat and then they disappear to the realm palace as well. But then we've got Askin's question, have I been chosen? The translation errors are weird. He either says, I have a choice, no, do I have a choice or not? Or have I been chosen or not? Either way, it probably relates to him going to the royal realm, maybe? Um, but it's really hard to say. Uh, and... As for the rest of the story, I hope they don't just get killed off. Because I feel like this arc's got a fair bit left in it. So I'd like there to be some more bad guys, basically. Um, there's three story we still haven't seen yet. So I suppose with Askin, Uryu, and Hashoth, that does leave us with six story left. But, uh, yeah, is that all? Yeah, pretty much. Um, obviously, Giselle's disappeared. There's a lot going on, and there's a lot of really kind of... There's a lot of questions need answering. How the hell did they even get to the Royal Realm? 
like, I mean, we know that the barrier's broken, but how did they teleport? So, yeah. There's a lot of questions need answering, but it was a very good chapter, I thought, actually. Um, 9 out of 10 from me. Very excited for next week. If Manga Stream is accurate, they say that Yuharbox objective becomes clear next week. Very excited for that. Colour page as well. Really hoping, as always, we get a similar to colour page, but I imagine it'll be Ichigo, Uryu, and Orohime. Um, but it'd be cool if it was more than that. Um, and they get lead colour as well next week, so that, that does that mean we get an actual Manga page as well? I don't really know. But I'm excited all the same. So, yeah, that's kind of it. I can't really think of anything else that I need to talk about, because frankly, we just need some answers. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes next week. I don't know what Ichigo's going to do, other than flip out. I should imagine that they will eventually try and prepare to go to the Royal Realm, but I'm kind of hoping it's not that easy. Um, but we'll see. We still need to see the Orankar. This seems like the perfect time to see them, since the Gargantia just opened. Um, but what would they do? They'd just help against the Sterator, I suppose. But, you know, this whole battle now kind of seems a bit futile, what's left, because the bad guys have already escaped. Obviously with Eisen, he didn't get away until all the Sterator were defeated. Uh, all the Esparta were defeated. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. And like, will Soul Society revert back now? It's really hard to say. Or is or is the fact that the Vandenreich has replaced the Soul Society all part of their whole takeover? Like, that's it, and it's never gonna go now. And now Yohavak and the rest are gonna go up to Sol up to the palace and leave the Sturmeter in charge of what is now the main city. So that leads me again to think the Sturmeter aren't gonna die yet. Anyway, guys, I'm not gonna let this video drag on anymore. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this week's chapter and just Try and give me some answers, or at least what you think. Um, uh, the artwork is superb, um, and it's just a really great chapter. You know, I, I really liked it this week. I'm very excited for next week, very excited. And hopefully, my, well, no, not hopefully, my video will be on time next week. So uh, I'll catch you there. But until next time, week, guys. Until next time, guys. <laughs> See ya.